Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Rhino Rack Vortex Aero Crossbar System here on our 2021 Ford Bronco Sport. So this is what our crossbar system looks like installed on our Bronco here. Now for starters, we actually have two different color options for our crossbars. We have the black, which is what we're using now, and there's also an option for silver crossbars. So it really doesn't matter which one you choose, it's more preference and which one you think is going to blend in well with your vehicle better. So if we take a closer look at the actual shape of our crossbars, they have sort of a rounded oval aerodynamic shape. The aerodynamic crossbars here are going to do a great job of cutting through that wind, so you're not going to have as much resistance reducing your miles per gallon, and you're also not going to have that excessive wind noise. This aerodynamic shape here is going to be great for again cutting down the wind noise and making sure we're not losing too many miles per gallon because they do a great job of really just cutting through that wind. They also, in my mind, look a little bit better than some of the other crossbar options, such as the square or the circular ones. So adding a roof rack to your Ford Bronco Sport is going to be an excellent option because it's going to make your vehicle that much more versatile. Now there's really an endless amount of things we can use a roof rack for on your vehicle. You can use it from anything to carrying bikes, so if we want to hit the trails, carrying some extra cargo if we need to free up some space inside the vehicle for the family on those long road trips. Or if we wanted to go out and hit the water, we could easily throw a couple kayaks up on there. There's really an endless amount of opportunities here with the roof rack. So in regards to capacity, our system here is going to be rated for 165 pounds. Now just to clear up some confusion with you guys, you're probably going to see a higher rating for the actual crossbars, but we're always limited by the weakest component there with the roof rack setup, which happens to be the feet. So therefore, although the crossbar capacity will be higher, this system here, as it's assembled currently, is going to have a 165 pound restriction evenly distributed across both bars. So in regards to accessory compatibility, the shape of these, we talked a little bit about those just a minute ago, being that they're an arrow shape. So that's actually going to accommodate most different roof rack mounted accessories because arrow is the most popular now. However, there's also another attachment method, and that's going to be these channels up top. Now right now we have a rubber strip in them to get, cut down on the wind noise, but when we're using those channel mounted accessories we can actually remove this rubber strip and then we can just simply slide those into the crossbar. Now with the channel mounted accessories they're typically a little bit easier to put on, you don't have to worry about fighting back and forth with the clamps or U-bolts, whatever that particular accessory uses. So if you have any channel mounted or you're looking for channel mounted accessories for ease of installation, this roof rack system here is going to easily accommodate those. So if you're wondering about security, we do have some built-in features here of this rack. Now number one, it takes a special key to remove the end caps, therefore if we do have any channel mount accessories we won't be able to slide those off unless we have the key here for the end caps. And by having the end caps locking to the crossbars, that's also going to provide security of our actual roof rack to the vehicle itself because you won't be able to access the bolt we need without the end cap removed. So one thing I do want to make note of, our lock cores here on the end of the crossbar, they are plastic, so chances are a thief could probably get them off if they spend a little bit of time. However, at most time, just the presence of a lock is going to deter most thieves. But if that doesn't do it for you guys, you can actually upgrade to metal locks here on the end caps, just as an extra added measure of security. So in regards to installation, this one is very, very simple, guys. All the tools that we need come with our kit here. It's simply going to clamp on to our factory raised rails. Therefore, we're not going to have any modifications to the vehicle whatsoever. Now, I truly believe you guys can get this on in about an hour or so, depending on your skill level. Let's go ahead and walk you through that entire process now. So first part of our installation here, we're going to be taking our crossbar assembly here. Now, your end caps can probably just pull off. Ours are actually locked on there. But I believe the tool for this is actually stored inside the crossbar, so you should just be able to pull the end caps off. But just to show you how to use them, this tool here unlocks the end caps and then we can pull them off. We have one on each end here. You're also in your kit here going to have some rubber strips in the bottom of these channels here. We're going to pull those out as well. Looks like we actually locked that one. But once they're unlocked, we can just pull them out. So again, we want to remove the end caps, the rubber strips, and make sure you have your tool here. But now what we can do is, we're going to be taking our crossbar assembly here, and we're going to be placing our feet into the crossbar assembly in those channels here. So make sure that we have the clamp sort of facing outward, if you will. We obviously wouldn't want to install it like that. It needs to go like this. 
And if we look on our clamp assembly here, you're gonna see we have those two little ears there. Now, sometimes that they're worn down enough for our particular case, we don't have to worry about compressing them, but your guys are gonna be newer, so they're gonna be a little bit more stiffer. So you may need to pinch those down in order to slide it into the channel there. Just try to give you guys a better view of that. Just line up the channel. And ours, like I said, are kind of worn down, so they kind of slide in there easier, but yours could catch right there, in which case you would just pinch in those two tabs, and we should be able to slide the foot the rest of the way in. But I've got this one on here. I'm gonna turn the crossbar assembly over, and we're gonna repeat that same process there for our other side. So now we're ready to install our crossbar assembly on the vehicle here. Now we've got quite a bit of freedom in regards to the location of our crossbars, but we do have to have them spaced a certain amount apart. Therefore, the crossbar spread, which is the center of the front crossbar to the center of the rear crossbar, that needs to be between 27 and 9 16 inches to 31 and a half inches. So I recommend installing the crossbar towards the front of the vehicle as far forward as you can get it, and then measuring roughly 30 inches back from there, which is gonna put us in this location. So it doesn't matter which one we start with, but we're gonna go ahead and mark out the two locations. I've just used a piece of painter's tape here, and I know that I want my clamp to be in the center of that tape. So now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and set the crossbar assembly up on the vehicle in one of our predetermined spots. So we'll take our crossbar assembly here, and this sort of roughly lining up with one of our two marks that we've made. Now you can kind of get the feet to line up on the crossbar on the other side there, just making sure it doesn't fall off and hit the vehicle there. Just wanna be safe. And now we're gonna line up this one here. So I've got it to where I, about where I want it. I'm gonna go ahead and take off that tape. I just use that as a marker. And then now I'm going to spread open the clamps there and just let the crossbar drop into position. So now we're on the other side here. We can go ahead and set the foot down onto the crossbar. So if you find that you can't open up these feet enough to fit over the crossbar, you can take your tool here and just loosen that bolt in the center there for the foot pad. And once we loosen that a few rotations, that'll actually allow us to open up these clamps a little bit more. And then we should be able to just press it down onto the crossbar, just like that. Now, you also wanna make sure that this little rubber clamp around here that sort of seals onto the crossbar, you wanna make sure that doesn't get folded up under the bar there. We have had that happen a couple times. But now we've got both sides on. What we're gonna do next is, we're gonna make sure it's centered there. So we're gonna measure from the outside of the foot pack to the outside of the bar, and just make sure it's the same on both sides. You can easily shift it to either side just by pressing on it like so, if you need a little bit more overhang on one side than the other. Once we have the crossbar centered, we can go ahead and tighten down our foot pack here. Now we're gonna be using the torquing tool that comes in your kit, and basically the way this works is, when it's reached the proper torque, this tab here is gonna flatten out. So the tool here is gonna go in the channel in the crossbar, which attaches that hex bolt, and that's gonna be tightening those clamps so it grips the rail there. And again, it's a good idea to make sure you alternate back and forth side to side before you fully tighten it down, just to make sure it's nice and even. So I'll hop over to the other side, give it a couple more turns, and then we'll torque them both using our tool. Now we'll take our end cap here, just a press fit onto the end of the crossbar. We'll take our tool here to lock the end cap there. And now we have one more on the other side. So one last thing we need to do before we complete our installation, if you remember the rubber strips that we removed from the bottom of the channels earlier, you're actually gonna cut them and install them here on the roof side, if you will. So we're gonna have a space here along the bottom of our crossbar that we need to install that rubber strip in to protect it. And that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the Rhino Rack Vortex Aero Crossbar System here on our 2021 Ford Bronco Sport.